Good morning, everyone. So delighted to be here for yet another installment of the Love Mastery Game. I'm Carrie Hummingbird, and I love this little simple game. It's really a helpful oracle for moving through and figuring out, you know, what's going on in your life and your challenges that the mystery, the mystery of life is bringing to you and presenting in your life for your edification, for your learning, for your growth, for your wisdom. And uh, we play this game uh, to learn um, in what I call Earth School and to ask for the support of our guides and allies on Earth School to help us out with our lessons here. And so um, if you've reviewed your, your game materials, you should have several different sheets of paper depending on uh, where you got the game from and how you've been playing it. And all of these sheets are also available in the Facebook group under the files section. And so you should have a, um, for this particular game this week, you should have the, the sheet, which is the inquiry sheet. We'll be using that today, the inquiry sheet. And we'll also be working with um, the mastery being states today the mastery being states sheet. This is one we often use to play this game. Um, this is one of the sheets you wanna have with you. And then also the mastery principles. These are the mastery principles that we're working with. These are the principles that we're learning how to master. And so as um, today, uh, this week, um, we're gonna be working with fire, water, wind, and earth. And these are all part of the major allies sheet. So if you look at the major allies sheet, you'll see in the center row there, fire, water, wind, and earth. So those are under major allies. And then we also have the minor allies sheet, which we're, we won't be working with this week, but those are other allies you can be working with. And if you've downloaded the goddesses game, um, which is a derivative of this game, you can also see that there's the goddesses sheet as well. So that's all there. All right, so we're gonna be working primarily with um, the mastery principle sheet and the being sheet and the, the inquiry sheet today because we are going to um, ask a question. So just, um, we're gonna open sacred space uh, over the entire game this week so that when we are playing this game where we know we're working within sacred space. I welcome in the south direction to hold us in sacred safety and love and protection as we work with the elements this week to understand more about ourselves, connect us deeply with the earth south. We welcome your presence and to help us to open our hearts and open our minds and our perceptions and to realize how held, loved and supported we are. We welcome you south. We welcome you west to help us to release any distractions we might have as we move through the week to give us access to some quiet space, some quiet time so that we can drop into our, our senses, our perceptions, the nuances. And in that space of the stillness and the nuance, we'll perceive so much more. And so we welcome you west to help us to release all distractions and to help us also to release any blocks to our opening up our perceptual filters. We welcome you west. We welcome you north, place of Sewer Kente Hummingbird. We're so grateful to be here. We welcome the ancestors to guide us. We know that our ancestors talk to us beyond, from beyond the veil and maybe have a hard time getting through to us if we're very busy and distracted. So we welcome you ancestors in this quiet space uh, every day this week to support us in deepening our knowledge of ourselves and our wisdom of our human experience. And so we welcome you north. We welcome the ancestors. North, help us remember who we are in truth and love and help us to access the highest vibrational experience as a human. We welcome you north. 
We welcome the East Eagle Condor flying so high with the Great Spirit. Help us to fly high as well. We welcome you East, the new dawn, the new day, the new potential, the new possibility that stretches before us now. Help us to be on the golden path, the golden line of our highest destiny, knowing that that doesn't mean there won't be any challenges, but that we know that the challenges we're facing are for the highest good for ourselves and others, and so it's much easier to accept them. So thank you, East, for putting us on that golden line. We welcome the earth below, Pachamama Mother Gaia. We're so grateful and blessed for your beauty and your love and your guidance. Thank you for these beautiful, healthy, strong bodies and minds that can heal instantly. We are so grateful to be here. Thank you also for all of the support you've gifted us, the mountain spirits, the rocks, the stones, the kuyas, the medicine stones. We welcome the crystals. We welcome all of the plants in the plant kingdom. We welcome the tree nations, all the beautiful trees. We welcome all the creepy crawlers and the spiders and the ants and all of that life that mulches the earth. We welcome all of the animals that walk the earth and give us many special medicine gifts as they interact with us. We welcome all the bird allies, the winged ones, and we welcome mariposa and dragonfly for transformation. And we welcome, of course, the elements. We'll be working with the elements this week. We welcome the earth, the water, the fire, the air. We are part of you. You are part of us. And we welcome the oceans, the dolphins, and the whales. And we come up to the Father Sky. Grandmother Moon and the Star Nations, we welcome you. We welcome your light. We welcome the sunlight, the moonlight, the starlight, the rainbow light. We welcome all of the ascension codes and the activations for this epic transformation into Homo Luminous. And we come into sacred space all together, surrounded by the old, old oak trees, the wise ones, the ancient ones, with their thick, thick trunks and their roots stretching deep into the earth underneath us, their branches reaching high overhead. We welcome the sanctuary. And the sanctuary is a sacred space we visit when we wish to have fewer distractions, more sacred space, and more ability to tap into our higher mind, our frontal cortex, our third eye, our senses, the nuances in the space together. And so here we are in sacred space in the sanctuary. And so on your inquiry sheet, again, it looks a little bit like this. On your inquiry sheet, it says at the top, I desire help with this inquiry today. And so write down something that you desire help with today. What is coming up for your your information? What what is you what is it that you have questions about that you would like this the element of fire to help you with? Maybe you're having trouble getting motivated. Maybe you're running out of energy, you feel very tired or lethargic. Maybe you don't see you don't feel seen or you're afraid to be seen. Maybe you've got some stuck energy around something. So just take a moment and, and write down what you think that is. Okay, and now on the line that says to my aid comes, write element of fire or fire. And now we're going to skip over just a tiny little bit down to the line that says state of being and invite me to be state of being. And the invitation now is to, in your mind's eye, inside of you, close your eyes and get very still. Take a deep breath in your belly. and release and now think of a number from 1 to 12 okay 
and I'm going to hold this up and you can see what was the number <laughs> what was the number 1 to 12 that's on this sheet of paper do you see what the little word says or use your own little sheet of paper mastery being states to see the point I'm doing my best here people like this is always so much fun for me this part <laughs> like so ridiculous about how to get this showing for you guys <laughs> okay hopefully you got it okay and now let's close our eyes again and think of another number from 1 to 12 And now this is going to go on the line principle of mastery. And so I'm going to do my best to hold the principle of mastery sheet up for you. And you can hopefully <laughs> try it on this angle. I don't know why this is so hard for me. I'll fix it in the replay. Okay. Find your number and write down what it says. Okay, Okay. Now, now we are going to work with fire. So fire is a powerful element. Fire is a very powerful element. Fire is an element that can help us with rapid transformation in our lives. Fire works with our ancient human brains. It works with the reptilian brain and the limbic brain, these ancient survival brains, to help us to ceremoniously or ritually know that something has been released. For example, when we place something in the fire and it burns away to nothing, we can use this as a transformation ritual because that helps the the ancient brains within our human mind to know, oh, that thing's gone now because fire burned it. Fire took it away. And this is one way that fire can play with us. So you can always do like a little fire ceremony, very helpful, pick up a little toothpick or a small piece of paper, write on, the, if you use paper, write on the paper the thing you're releasing, blow into the paper or the toothpick the energy, the way it feels, the thing that you're releasing. You just trust that as you breathe it into the paper or the toothpick, it's transferring some of that energy into that burnable object. And then as we blow it in, and then we burn it in a little candle flame. It doesn't have to be a big roaring fire, although those are really wonderful. But it can just be a little flame. It can just be a little candle flame, and then you just burn that thing in the candle flame. And as it's doing that, you're trusting this thing is, a, at least another layer of this thing is burning and releasing and transmuting. And then in this quiet space, there's a quiet bubble of space after it's burned that the fire is bright. And then you pull that fire into your mind for right thinking, into your heart for right love or as the Carol people in the Andes Mountains say, Munai. And you burn some of that, take some of that flame and put it into your will center for right action, right doing. These are the three centers we work with as medicine keepers and the lineage of the Carol shamans from the Andes Mountains, which is an Incan, an Incan line of medicine wisdom. So you can work with fire in that way. And you can also work with fire when you would like to brighten some shadow up within yourself. Let's say that you're um, experiencing some challenges. You can burn to release, of course, just like we did. And you can also just spend some moment in ceremonious space. We opened sacred space here, for example. You can spend some moments with that candle flame and just just look at the flame and as you gaze in the flame of the candle you'll notice that it has three colors which are the three building blocks of life it has 
a golden light, which represents energy. It has a little rose light somewhere around the base and up sometimes into the flame. There's this rose light. That rose light is compassion, moon eye, love. And then it has an electric blue light somewhere around on the inside, maybe at the hottest part. The electric blue light, and this is the light of truth. This is that right thinking, the light of truth. So the three centers are the flame elements, the building blocks, the golden light, the, the rose colored light, and the, the electric blue light. And so you can tap into these high frequencies through just a simple little candle flame. And you can meditate. You can meditate by just staring at the candle flame. So it's something to try tonight. As, even as you complete your inquiry with our game today and you get the information that you're looking for, you can actually then go and just light a candle, do the little exercise, the ritual we just talked about, and then stare into the candle flame and ask it for answers. Ask for some answers to deeper answers, really deeper answers into how you can apply this wisdom you just received. So to my aid comes fire. So knowing all of this about fire, knowing that the ancient peoples, they would keep, there were sacred fire carriers, there were torch bearers, there were people who were given the responsibility, the sacred responsibility for the very important responsibility for the tribe of keeping the fires burning. And so, for example, I'm part Cherokee, and in the Cherokee tradition, they had um, um, a main hub building where there was a fire that burned eternally and the fire keepers were the ones who were responsible for keeping that flame burning like never let that flame go out because if that flame goes out welcome diana if that flame goes out it's like the whole tribe has now lost the power of fire and then of course people learned how to recreate it using um you know some flint and some spark you know figured out how to make spark but but fire was considered to be very sacred something to be kept alive always burning in the tribe because it had a bigger meaning than um simply you know just an element it had a meaning of like oh my gosh this is the spark of the sun this is the spark of the power of in the caro tradition they call it inti tai tai the father son this is the spark of this beautiful mastery um element that isn't that lights up our whole world this is power and some people believe they're they're children of the sun they believe they come from the sun they're children of the sun and and they come here to earth to experience life as being a human on the face of the earth or maybe they came to be an animal for a while or a plant or a tree and or a rock even and then elevated to become a human and even that is just a funny little notion because the indigenous people don't think of humans as elevated above all of their creation they're just our brothers and sisters we're equal we are equal to all of life on earth. So the fire is thought of to be sort of like an emissary of the sun, you know, to light the way at night. And of course, um, this is another reason why tending the fire was a sacred responsibility and it required something that people are lacking a lot in our current world, which is devotion. It required commitment and devotion to keep that fire going. They couldn't just fall asleep. They had to stay awake and make sure that fire kept burning all night. It was important to tend the fire to keep the energy of the tribe and the connection with the sun going on this dark night of Mother Earth. And I feel like we're in that we're in that part right now on the planet. There's a lot of darkness on the planet. And those of us who feel called to be fire keepers, well, we have to keep the fires burning. So how can you keep the fires burning? You can burn the fires at on altars, for example. I have many altars set up around my house for different purposes. Um, to bring in different energies and so fire when I light a candle on that altar the fire of that candle is what starts to activate the energies on the altar it starts to bring them alive 
as I light the fire candle on that altar, it brings those energies alive and they start to mix and mingle and I can put more intentions in there. I can oftentimes, I, I maintain an altar for my whole tribe. So I'm always tending the altar. I'm always tending the fire. It's an act of devotion to all of the people I serve. And I'm always blowing a little tobacco in there as well. Tobacco being another one of my allies. I, I bring in Palo Santo on the altar. I bring in all these really beautiful plant teachers as well to support my people and their transformation work that they're doing which is is beautiful big work as earth keepers so you can do an altar for your ancestors you can do an altar for your family you can do an altar for some project that you have that you really are passionate about and you want to give it power and so you can light the candles and bring the fire to it so these are just some ideas these are things we cover in inner medicine training and these are just some ideas you can do with fire okay we're actually just going to close our eyes now and just take a moment to allow the spirit of fire to meet you inside the sanctuary and just notice it can come in however it comes in for you particularly and so close your eyes and see yourself standing in the sanctuary surrounded by the old oak trees the wise ones the ancient ones with their thick thick trunks and their roots stretching deep into the earth underneath us the branches reaching high overhead and feel the spirit of fire now enter the sanctuary and have a conversation with you. You might ask the spirit of fire about the answers that you receive for your state of being and your, your mastery principles also. And be sure to ask fire, what is the medicine that you are offering me for my challenge? And now putting all of this together, the being state, the principal state, and what fire has shared with you about its medicine, you can contemplate a moment your realization. To my aid comes fire who offers me medicine, invites me to be in a state of being as I master this principle of mastery. Therefore, I am. Okay, so now take that information and place it onto your inquiry sheet and do a little fire ceremony today to work with fire more as we shared at the beginning. Do a little fire ceremony, release something burnable to the fire around this inquiry, sit in contemplation with the flame and see what further medicine comes in for you. If you feel really resonant with the fire, maybe you're a fire keeper too. Maybe you are a sacred fire tender for Earth. We'll see you tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Central. We'll be working tomorrow, I think, is the element of water. Usually that's how I do it. Tomorrow is the element of water. So we'll see you tomorrow. We'll see what games we can play with water, what wisdom we can earn. And in the meantime, today is all about fire. So enjoy your day.
Blessings to everyone. Bye for now.